Hey guys, what's going on? And in this video, uh, we're going to be talking about the best PvP talents for a Havoc Demon Hunter in Shadowlands 9.1. So as many of you guys already know, um, if you're keeping somewhat up to date on the changes for a Demon Hunter, Havoc Demon Hunter specifically, um, you'll know that we got some of our talents reworked and we got some new talents as well, um, as did like many other classes. And these three that I have currently, uh, Glimpse, Mortal Dance, and Reverse Magic, they're not like my default. I wouldn't say they're, you have to run them 100% of the time, but out of 10 games, I would run these um, maybe eight or nine, out of those 10 games, I would run them eight or nine times. Eight or nine of those games, I would run them. So let me go over why. Uh, glimpse, you gain immunity whenever you use your Vengeful Retreat to uh, crowd control effects. So like stuns, fears, mind controls, incapacitations, um, anything that prevents you from not being able to control your character. Demon Hunters already have some other immunities. Um, some explicit, some not. Um, example would be like Netherwalk, or the one second of immunity you have when you're activating your uh, Metamorphosis, or even the one second uh, when you're going up in the air from your Rain From Above PvP talent. Um, so Demon Hunters certainly are no stranger to immunities. And I like this one because there's... Uh, there's like three arenas, right, that have like a second story, meaning like Robodome, you have like the ramp, um, Mugambala, you have the stairs, and you got the second, you have like the second floor, right? Blades Edge Arena, you have the bridge, and depending on how you position yourself before you use your eventual retreat, you could potentially have three seconds easily of 75% uh, damage uh, reduction as well as uh, CC like immune to CC so let's say you're going up against some type of caster and they're let's say a warlock right he's using chaos bolt and you can uh, eventual retreat off the bridge eventual retreat off the ramp eventual retreat off the second uh, floor right like a Mugambala and you'll take 75% reduced damage, assuming you're still in the air. Um, you would have to pair this up with your double tap, right? Like your glide ability when you pop out your slow fall, like your wings. Um, it's just a little bit of coordination, but you can definitely uh, use it to your advantage. Or if someone's casting a fear on you, um, you can't, you're, it's not going to be an interrupt, but you will be immune, right? So let's say the war, that warlock, it's another way to avoid his chaos bolt so you can um he's casting a fear on you but you want to save your kick for the chaos bolt right so you can backflip right right before he's about to get his fear off and he might try and cast another fear but that can give your team the chance to potentially kick him or maybe you're just trying to buy one second so that way your stun comes up and you can stun him and then you can finish him off. Um, there's just a handful of different ways that I can go over another time in another video of how this specific talent can be very useful. And I mean, I can do that later, but let's go on to the next one. Uh, Mortal Dance. This used to be Mortal Rush and it's a similar effect. Well, it is like the same effect, right? It's a healing reduction for that you can put on uh, the enemy player. Pre 9.1, whenever you would fell rush, and if your fell rush, your fell rush does damage, right? It's your charge ability. So if your fell rush did damage to a target, then you would put a mortal strike effect, right? A mortal a healing reduction effect. That's what it means. And uh, they made it to where instead of having to use your fell rush. Um, you would use it with your Blade Dance and Death Sweep now. So I was testing this out, and it says 
Blade Dance now reduces the target's healing received by 25% for 5 seconds. That's what it says. Um, when I was testing it out on the dummies, um, it only the Mortal Strike effect, the healing reduction effect, only gets applied when the final strike of your Blade Dance or Death Sweep uh, hits the target. So let's say... Um, you get uh, it, you you can't just constantly spam it over and over again, right? Because Death Sweep and Blade Dance do multiple hits. Um, it has to be like on the final strike. But there's more to that later. It's still good. Um, it's just you'll be less clunky now having to use your fell your fell rush would have has mobility purposes. It would have it has damage purposes. Assuming you're running Unbound Chaos, and then even your um, healing reduction effect, right? I mean, there it had three different purposes. Now it has two, so it takes off the pressure of always having your fell rush up, and they just reincorporated reincorporated it into one of your main abilities, which is Blade Dance, which I think is a really good one. So I would run this like eight, nine times out of ten, um, assuming we don't have another healing reduction but i'm pretty sure almost every class should have like a, some type of healing reduction now uh, going into 9.1 so uh, it just depends on what you're running right um but typically like in a two situation 2v2 arena i mean say you're running with a healer um it's nice to have a healing reduction so that way you just put more pressure reverse magic this one's been in the game a long time um times I would not run this is let's say I'm going up against let's say in a 2v2 situation 2v2 arena I wouldn't play it against like a like a rogue and a warrior right um, there's just nothing for me to use reverse magic on because what it is is it's essentially a dispel right it's a it removes magic effects uh, it moves, sorry not magic effects it removes magic debuffs off of me or off of my teammates so there's nothing that the warrior or the rogue can put on you or I wouldn't use it so that would be like a very like niche uh, reason as to why I would not use this right um, there's other talents as well I mean but most likely you're going to be going up against like let's say a priest that can use mind games, a paladin that can use hammer of justice, um, even just to dispel roots. Like if you're going up against a druid or a shaman, um, and you get rooted, um, roots is considered a magic effect. So you can reverse it off of yourself if you're trying to keep pressure on, say, that shaman or druid. Um, being rooted or stunned is just one of the biggest things that goes against a demon hunter right because that's their strong suit is their movement so reverse magic um also a priest with mind let's say mind games yeah typically you're going to be running reverse magic um reverse hunt you can reverse sorry not hunt uh, a hunter's uh like fro freezing trap assuming it's not talented to make it to where it is not a magic effect right um most of the time, I would say you would always be running these top three. Um, in other situations, you might have, like, let's say, a rain from above. And uh, that's if you're going up against, like, a double melee where they wouldn't have, let's say, like, a magic effect, like that rogue and warrior combo, um, or even, like, a monk or something. Uh, you can use rain from above defensively just to remove yourself from the game. Um, there's some coordination on that like with your healer and stuff so that way you don't die or they don't die um you got chaotic imprint um this one's kind of rng i mean i haven't tested it out but just by reading it i wouldn't necessarily use it myself um it can potentially be good it would be more of like a utility thing um if you're running with another class but i think the value I would get out of these other three talents just outweighs the Chaotic Imprint. Uh, maybe there is a certain 
comp I would run this against. Um, I just haven't had enough time to really play around with all of these. Um, these are the three that just really stood out to me and what I feel like I could use like immediately, right? And what I could foresee. Maybe maybe you can use this one, but for right now I don't see much use of it. Uh, detainment, if you're running like a cleave team, right? Um, the extra CC helps. Let's say you're running with, uh, I don't know, like a death knight or something, right? Where you don't have much CC, um, this would definitely help you out. Um, you can take this over, I don't know, reverse magic perhaps, right? Um, Maybe even Immortal Dance. Um, I'm not sure what a Death Knight has, but that's just what I'm thinking off of the top of my head. Glimpse is just your more uh, defensive uh, talent. Everything can be moved around. It depends on what you're running and what they're running. I think that's the nice thing about Demon Hunters. They have a lot of flexibility in terms of what talents they can choose based upon their arena partners and their t uh, opponents. <laughs> Cover of Darkness was reworked. Um, what it used to do, uh, Darkness used to have a 20% base, uh, a 20% chance to avoid all damage. That was baseline. What this was and what it did pre 9.1 was it gave it gave that it buffed that 20% up to 70%. So it increased your chance by 50% to avoid all damage. Um, now it's like a compromise. They buffed up. Baseline, they buffed Darkness to where it's a 50% chance to avoid all damage, right? Which I think is fair, given uh, Demon Hunters are now free. They free up one PvP slot, right? Um, it was like, by default, you would have to run Cover of Darkness because Darkness just wasn't that powerful, and Demon Hunters didn't have that much self-healing of the uh, very low survivability, right? Outside of their mobility. So it was pretty much guaranteed you would be running this. Rare circumstances that you would not, maybe against like a caster or something like that. Um, but I mean, it increases your four, by the radius by four yards and its duration by two seconds. Um, where I would see this applicable, perhaps like rated battlegrounds. Um, that's where I can see it, really. Even like in a 3v3 match, I mean... Assuming you have like a mortal strike, uh, you have a healing reduction for the opponent, right? You could perhaps swap it out with this one, and all three of you guys can stack, right? Maybe someone's rooted or whatever. Um, or they're slowed and they can't fully get in there. I mean, there are situations like that where four yards makes a huge difference. Um, but it's like a very select few games. It's not maybe out of ten games, you would play this maybe one or two times. Tops, I would say. Uh, Unending Hatred. Uh, you gain more fury based on the damage um, dealt. Uh, so the more people attack you, the more fury you're going to have, which is good. Which means more chaos strikes, more annihilations. Uh, you're just going to have more fury. And um, I mean, I can see this where let's say you're not going to be the target. So you can perhaps switch out glimpse for Unending Hatred. Um, pre 9.1, the damage that was Unending Hatred, what was changed about it was it was specifically from only magic damage. Any magic damage you took, then you would gain Fury. Now it's from all damage. So if you want to play a more offensive comp where you won't necessarily be the target, perhaps let's say you're playing with, um, I don't know, like a, like a Mistweaver Monk or a, a Rep Paladin, right? There's a higher chance that a Rep Paladin or a Mistweaver Monk are going to be the target over you, the Demon Hunter. So you don't have to play as defensive with Glimpse, right? Immune to CC and 75% reduced damage, right? Uh, still good, but you can potentially run this and just go full offensive and you'll just be doing a bunch of damage while everyone else is taking hits and uh, being crowd controlled. That's something I can see that running. I mean, it's it's fair. Uh, Blood Moon, uh, what it does is it's an AoE uh, purge. So what Consume Magic does is it's a... Uh, it removes one uh, magic benefit from the opponent, right? 
and then two, it uh, has a 20% chance to actually remove the a second one. What this does is it turns it into like an arcane torrent. So if you're a blood elf, arcane torrent, it removes one beneficial magic from everyone within eight yards, right? So you essentially get two AoE purges, which is pretty cool. Um, if you're going up against like casters or something, I mean, this would be really nice. Something where people are stacked. Um, if not, I mean, again, niche. And we can go on to the next one. Last one, the video is like going on 16 minutes almost. But Isolated Prey, I would run this one like in 2v2s. Uh, just because less people, right? Um, 2v2, there's less of it. You can crowd control the other person and usually you'll get a kill like in a stun, right? And they can take 10% increased damage from I-beam while you're beaming them and you can stun them and you can finish them off. So I would use this in 2v2. Um, would it be applicable in 3v3? Yeah, but you got the other person to potentially worry about, right? Unless you got really good cross uh, crowd control. But I would say this is more for 2v2 if you're even considering running it. Um, I mean, I would try it out. It's a new talent. Um, there's no harm in trying things out. But let's just recap real quick. Um, I don't want this video to be too long. 80% um, of the time, 90% of the time, I would be running these three talents. Glimpse, Mortal Dance, Reverse Magic. Reverse magic to remove roots, uh, mind games, sheeps, and all that other stuff off of... It's a dispel, right? Dispel magic, that's what it is. Mortal dance to keep the pressure up with the healing reduction on the teammate, on the opponent. And glimpse to avoid some crowd control and to have small reduction of damage if you have incoming damage, right? Like a flying chaos bolt or an elemental shaman's uh, storm keeper like lava burst or lightning bolt. Something like that. You take 75% reduced damage. Think of it like a mage's uh, prismatic cloak talent, right? They blink and 50% magic damage reduction. But in this case, it's all damage. And that's about it. That's all I got. Um, PvP talents. I can make another video on other talents and like what stuff to do. If you can think of anything, leave a comment below. Um, don't forget to leave. If you like the video, thumbs up. Uh, Follow my YouTube, uh, follow my Twitch as well. I stream every day. I stream Demon Hunter Arena. I usually do games with viewers. Uh, give me a follow. Come say hi at twitch.tv forward slash junk in my house. And that's all I got. So later.